Good morning, class. Welcome once again. Uh, thank you for connecting on this class uh, where we will study more about prayer and intercession. Let's pray and begin. I would like to request uh, one of our students to please lead with a word of prayer. Anyone can do that, please. Please unmute your mic and lead in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you, Jesus, that um, we are going to learn something today from uh, prayer intercession through Pastor Nancy. Uh, I pray the Father God that it's going to help us to um, grow um, in our relationship with you and that our relationship with you will become more intimate. And uh, thank you, Jesus, that we will learn more and that uh, we'll be able to grasp what we are being taught in the class and uh, thank you jesus for everything and that you would um, um help us all Lord jesus to understand and to comprehend Lord jesus whatever we are learning thank you jesus for everything in the name of prayer. amen 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 thank you Rin, for uh leading us in prayer this morning so uh just a quick reminder to attempt the the assessment one for the online students for the e-learning students and uh, i know that uh, the on-campus students will have their assessments this week uh, you did not have it last week so uh, yes please do uh, do the exams because without clearing the exams you will not be able to uh, complete this course and move on to uh, you know the next semester so uh, yeah please make sure you attempt your assessments uh, and uh, the assessments are uh, till chapter 10 so chapters 1 to 10 if you've gone through you should be able to uh, do the uh, the assessment without any issues so today i am going to take up chapter 11 yeah so the question here in the chat is is it an open book exam as i told you last week yes it is an open book exam okay so you can make use of your notes uh, uh, and uh, answer the question so that should be all right okay so here we are uh, in our next chapter we uh, talked so much about persistent prayer in the last class and today we are going to learn about intercessory prayer now intercessory prayer is uh, a very common term in the christian circle but we would like to understand what intercessory prayer really means so in simple terms, intercession is going to God on behalf of someone else. Now, we do pray prayers uh, where we pray for ourselves. You know, we pray for God's uh, leading, his uh, blessings, uh, and you know so many other things that we personally want to receive. But intercession refers to us praying for someone else so that's what intercession is so let's quickly look at isaiah chapter 53 and verse 12 uh, i know that all of us have a copy of our notes so i encourage you to please look at the notes uh, as we go through today's chapter so isaiah 53 verse 12 it says he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors so this talks about jesus he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors so as you look at uh, this uh, scripture and you look up the hebrew words here for bore and then for intercession uh, it would revealed to us that jesus carried so bore means he carried our sin to the cross and intercession from the hebrew word you know it's a word uh, paga which means meat okay so jesus carried our sin and he met with god okay he met with god uh for the transgressors it says transgressors transgression means uh 
missing the mark it means doing something which should not be done or sinning against god so jesus carried our sins and he met with god you know on our behalf so uh, this expression of jesus carrying our sin which is a burden and meeting with god on our behalf not for himself but on our behalf uh, it is an act of at least it looks like an act of intercession now we uh, also see this word baga which i said you know he met with he met with god uh, that word we see in isaiah 53 verse 6 as well where it means has laid or he has uh, put it down before god so he has laid our sin before god so the act of jesus dying on the cross of calvary it is you may call it an intercessory act okay now of course it doesn't show us that jesus was praying the way we pray by uh, you know speaking or expressing his thoughts his requests before god but he carried our sin he met with god he laid it before god so that's what we have seen in these scriptures it is like intercessory prayer okay because intercessory prayer i began by saying it is about us going to god and praying for somebody else so jesus dying on the cross it looks like intercession because he went to god on behalf of others and their burdens okay so uh, we usually term this as a work of intercession so what jesus did on the cross of calvary is a work of intercession now our intercession is in line with what jesus has done on the cross now uh, of course we don't uh, you know generally we we go before god and we pray okay we express our uh, requests to him not as an act but more as you know uh, bringing the thoughts putting the thoughts into words and talking to god about it uh, but we see a parallel here we see a parallel uh, between what jesus has done in his action of carrying our sin on the cross and the way we pray okay so we go to god and we pray to god now jesus okay in let's understand the work of the cross a little bit more so that you know uh, we can see uh, you know how his intercession through this act of dying on the cross really was so uh, jesus by going to god became a mediator okay so let's understand this a mediator first timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 i want to request one of us to please read that verse first timothy chapter 2 and verse 5 For Could there is one God. It? Yeah, please go ahead. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus, the man Christ Jesus. Yes, thank you, Rin. So as we see here, there is one mediator between man and God, and that is the lord jesus christ because okay, that's what we see in this passage there is one mediator or we use other words to describe mediator mediator is uh, uh, a go between okay so we're all familiar that uh, at times when uh, you know reconciliation is required we generally look to a mediator let's let's uh, uh, you know talk about two parties quarreling or two parties fighting uh, uh, you would need a mediator to come and reconcile you know, both these parties so in the same way 
what Jesus has done for us is he has become the mediator between God and between man. So he came in between, so which is why we call him the go between. We can also call him the reconciler. Okay, so God and man needed to be reconciled. Jesus came as the go between or the reconciler and he brought us together. He carried our sins. He paid for, uh, you know, our forgiveness, our healing, our, our deliverance, our blessings, our relationship with God, you know, to be restored. And he became the reconciler. So Jesus is a mediator. Now, when we talk about intercession, you need somebody to go between God and man. So in intercession, that's what a person does. We go to God. It could be on behalf of our friends. It could be on behalf of our church. It could be on behalf of our family members. It could be on behalf of our city, on behalf of our nation, you know, on behalf of anybody else. So what are we doing? Very similar picture as Jesus going to the cross on behalf of man. Okay, so we become the, you could say, uh, the people in between God and those who need prayer. Okay, so intercession has a very similar picture like Jesus being the mediator. But we should never misunderstand that we need another mediator. The Bible is very clear that Jesus was the only go-between who could bear the sins of mankind. Now, we as intercessors, we take requests of people and we go to God. But that doesn't mean that we are bearing people's sins and, you know, um, we are bringing the reconciliation on our own. Because if we say that, what happens is you know, we are trying to equate ourselves with Jesus, which is not the case and which can never happen. Jesus has already done the work of redemption for us on the cross of Calvary. We are just looking at a picture. So the way Jesus went to God on behalf of us and he became the go-between, intercession is also going to God on behalf of man. Okay. so. We are taking people's burdens uh, to God, you know, carrying it on our shoulders. So it's just a picture. And that's all I, I, I'm trying to suggest here that uh, what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, it was an act of intercession. But here we are praying prayers of intercession where we are like those people who are taking other people's concerns and we are going to God on behalf of them. So let me just pause for a moment and check if you are all in sync with what I'm saying, if there are any questions uh, or, you know, if I need to clarify what I just shared. So feel free if you have, uh, uh, you know, if you need to ask something, then you could do so. And I think it's a great opportunity for uh, the online students to uh, speak because so far you've only been posting on the chat. So I'd love to hear your voices. So uh, are we OK with the picture of you know, Jesus's act of intercession and our prayers of intercession and how they are somewhat similar, just that we are not, not uh, you know, bringing or, or doing the work of redemption because Jesus has done it once for all. You know, the book of Hebrews says one sacrifice. Uh, and, uh, you know, that was done by Jesus. 
he was the perfect sacrifice and uh, he already died for us since on the cross of calvary so all we are doing is we are just receiving from the provision you know that has come through the cross and one of the ways in which we can tap into what god has already done through jesus is through our intercessory prayer and intercession primarily means praying for others so we are able to pray for others go to god carry their burdens uh, uh, you know uh, uh, on our hearts we are able to meet with god we are able to plead for anything that people want it could be for their forgiveness it could be for their healing it could be you know for uh, an answer to prayer which people are seeking god for or even you know we could battle on behalf of them uh, against the enemy and you know continue to pray that they experience the victory of the cross in their life situation so that is the true nature of intercession now how many of us uh, uh, here would say that intercession is important is intercession important okay that's good to know intercession is important why is intercession important any thoughts on that because people need um our prayers and um like um maybe other like if we are praying for like non believers and like they don't know how to pray and uh, or if you are interceding for them to come to know about Christ then um and if we intercede and pray on behalf of them like god can move and he can work on behalf of what we are praying for them yeah 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 thank you thank you rin so that's uh, so true we know that people need intercession uh, especially unbelievers because they cannot you know uh, they can make prayers to god and we know that god hears but then we as believers we have uh, uh, you know we have the authority uh, in prayer which has been delivered to us because of the cross we have the power of the name of jesus that you can that we can use in prayer and these are all things that an unbeliever cannot use and uh, when we look at believers you know the bible says that in this world uh, all of us you know all all the believers the brethren we all go through challenges we all go through um, Uh, we all have needs okay we we need each other we need to support one another so as you look at scripture you know there are many scriptures where we find that people were praying for each other okay uh, paul was praying for different churches he was asking those people to pray for him he was asking those people to pray for uh, you know certain needs and requirements so prayer for each other pray for each other it's a it's a very common thing that you see in the bible and that's how god has orchestrated things in the kingdom of god there is a place for us to pray for ourselves but there is also a place where we can pray for one another and it is very effective and it is very much required as well right so we must pray for each other and uh, praying for others is what is known as intercession so as i look at the chat here krisha says to pray for different people city country uh, other relevant reasons so true uh, krisha and you know especially in our times we see that so many things are happening uh, in uh, regions of the world nations of the world cities uh, there are many concerns isn't it uh, burdens as we hear the news every day just uh, hearing the news you 
realize oh i need to be praying for uh, people in tough situations you know a flood and a, an earthquake and uh, you know a storm a tornado so many things even currently we know that all of this is happening in various regions of the world and uh, we must be praying for others uh, the other comment here uh, from uh, Sri Radha, it says, it also helps us to exercise our authority given to us. Okay, that's from Rin. Yeah, so Rin is saying that, uh, yeah, we learned that prayer is a way of exercising our authority. So intercession, obviously, intercession comes uh, within that category of prayer. Through our intercession, we are exercising authority. We're releasing authority. Okay, even over the lives of the people. So it becomes so very important. Now, uh, let's quickly look at the uh, ministry of Jesus. I said that the Lord Jesus, in his act of dying on the cross, uh, he showed us the meaning of intercession. Okay, going to God on behalf of the people's sins and laying the sins of the people before God to bring forgiveness to the people. So we learn the meaning of intercession from there. But another question that we need to ask about the ministry of Jesus is, yes, Jesus did that when he uh, came to the earth. But we also are aware in the book of Acts, we read that Jesus ascended up to heaven okay so he uh, as the disciples watched him he was lifted up and you know the clouds received him so where is he now he is seated at the right hand of the father and scriptures tell us that he no longer physically inhabits the earth so where is the position of jesus he is in the presence of the father in heaven so what is the ministry of jesus right now before you know he returns right we know that you know he will return and we know that you know he will rule and reign uh, and many different things have to take place in the future but right now as the lord jesus sits up in heaven what is the role that he plays. So there are a couple of scriptures in our notes and we will quickly go over them. Uh, could somebody please read Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25? Hebrews 7 and verse 25, please. You can unmute. Can I go ahead? Therefore, yes, please. Yes, uh, Tina, go ahead. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Were you able to hear me? Thank and... you. Thank you. Yes, yes, I did. I did. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, as we've seen, Hebrews 7.25, thanks, uh, Nina. We know that Jesus lives to make intercession. For whom? For us. He lives to make intercession for us. And what can his intercession do? It's able to save us. He's also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him. Okay. So. Uh, we know that the work of redemption already saves us, but up in heaven, Jesus right now, on the basis of the work of intercession, you know, or redemption that he has already done. So his death on the cross, you know, that is complete. And uh, the redem redemption that comes from his death on the cross, that's already complete. You know, he doesn't have to do anything more for us to be saved. But 
scriptures tell us that in heaven, you know, he continues to intercede for us on the basis of the work on the cross. Okay, so he does a work of intercession up in heaven. Let's also read Romans 8 and verse 34. Romans 8, 34. Yeah, I'll just come to the question on the chat. Uh, we'll read some verses. Romans 8, 34. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died, and furthermore is also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who make who also makes intercessions for us? <clears throat> who shall separate okay. us from the love of God? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Krisha. So, verse thirty-four uh, again talks to us about the redemptive work of Christ. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. So that is the redemptive work that Jesus did on the cross. And then, you know, that scripture moves on to reveal to us who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us. So his current ministry, where is Jesus right now? Hebrews, again, the book of Hebrews, it talks about how he is in the, uh, you know, real tabernacle of heaven in the presence of God. You know, that is the temple of God where the presence of God is hosted. So he is in heaven at the right hand of God doing what? Makes intercession for us. So, the present ministry of the Lord Jesus is to make intercession for the believers on the basis of his redemptive work on the cross. Uh, Hebrews 9.24, that's another verse which has been uh, given in the notes for us. And that says, for Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself now to appear in the presence of god for us so jesus makes intercession for us in the presence of god now because jesus makes intercession in the presence of god for us i have a question you know to ask all of us does that mean you and i can stop praying for ourselves or stop praying for others because Jesus is already praying for us. What are your thoughts about this? Jesus is praying for us, isn't it? So why should we pray? What do you think? Um, because um, Jesus asked us in the Bible to pray. He has asked us. I mean, um, he also told in his word, like, if we ask and believe, then we will receive what we have asked. So um, we can't just uh, be passive. We must be uh, active. Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks, sir. Thank you for attempting that. I really appreciate uh, you doing it and sharing your view where it is saying that Jesus taught us in the Bible to pray. Now, uh, that's correct uh, because John 16 26, you know, it's a very nice scripture. It says, In that day you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you. So, uh, Jesus was suggesting that the believers would pray and that he wouldn't be doing their praying, you know, uh, for them, that he would be interceding, but it's a different kind of intercession compared to the 
praying for others you know which we are supposed to do uh, or praying for ourselves which we are supposed to do so jesus did mention it so in john 16 26 he said in that day you will ask in my name and he clarifies he says and i do not say to you that i shall pray the father for you so i am not going to do your praying you have to do your praying while i do my part in interceding before the father so it's very clear yes jesus has a ministry of intercession up in heaven right now but that will not replace your ministry and my ministry of intercession where we pray for others okay so just wanted to clarify that before we go any further uh, and as i look at the chat here uh there was a question from rin where she asked the holy spirit is our mediator right now okay so uh, uh rin the holy spirit as a mediator could you please clarify what you mean here i mean like in um like i put the scriptures there Romans 20, uh, 8, verse 26 and 27, like uh, it says, like how the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us in verse 26 and 27 of Romans 8. And uh, so that's what the mediator does, right? The mediator intercedes on behalf of. So that's what I think. Okay, sure. Uh, so I, I get what you're saying. Uh, so on the basis of Romans 8, 26, you're saying, uh, wouldn't the Holy Spirit also make for a good mediator? Uh, but here are my thoughts. If you read that same uh, passage, you know, in certain versions, like I was just looking at it in the NKJV version, and it says, likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses for we do not know uh, what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So it begins by saying the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. Okay, uh, Though it goes on to say the Spirit himself makes intercession. When we look at other passages of the Bible, Okay, like we talked about praying in the spirit, right? Because this is uh, this uh, verse is about praying in the spirit. Okay, praying in the spirit. So, if you look at other passages, like for example, First uh, Corinthians fourteen, where fourteen and fifteen, where we said, you know, Paul says, "I pray in the spirit. I will pray in the spirit. I will sing in the spirit." You know, it shows us. That though this one verse uh, seems like the Holy Spirit kind of takes over, uh, other passages reveal to us that there is an element of our will involved, okay, in this intercession. So when we talk about praying in the Spirit, it's not like the Holy Spirit will take charge of us and uh, we will not have a say. Like he will just overtake us and then we begin to speak in tongues. It never works like that. Our will is very much involved. It's only when I am willing that the Holy Spirit can release, you know, those utterances through my mouth. Okay, so my faculties and my will is also equally involved. So when I talk about the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, his work in intercession, I would put it more like, I wouldn't say he's a mediator. You know, I wouldn't call him a mediator. Instead, what I would say is, I would say he helps believers. Okay? He helps us in our weaknesses. Or in other words, you know, the Holy Spirit, when you study about the Holy Spirit, you know, there is a description of the Holy Spirit uh, where we say that he is a one who stands alongside or he is a helper, you know, parakletos, that name, as you study that name of the Holy Spirit, he's a helper. So he does not really become a mediator. You and I, he's helping us make our intercession. 
Okay, so uh, I'm just trying to answer your question, Rin, where you said Holy Spirit, our mediator. So Holy Spirit is not a mediator in that sense. Jesus Christ, yes, he became the mediator between God and man. So that is quite clear. But Holy Spirit, you know, his role is more of a helper. He aids, okay? he supports, he strengthens. So that's how we look at the work of the Holy Spirit, even in the case of intercession. Okay, so Rin, I hope uh, it, it, it is clear that uh, there's no confusion regarding this. So we wouldn't call Holy Spirit as a mediator. Right, okay. Uh, okay, I see Krisha's answer to the earlier question which I had asked. So now we have understood, you know, we have seen how um, uh, we intercede, okay, and uh, we will not say that Jesus is doing, you know, our intercession for us, so we don't have to pray to God on behalf of others. Uh, we also need to note, you know, there is a passage in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, where Jesus is called as an advocate, okay, he is an advocate in heaven for us. So Based on this scripture, you know, a lot of people say that, uh, oh, Jesus is in heaven and every time we sin on earth, uh, you know, Jesus is there and Satan is there and Satan is accusing us and Jesus stands up and he, uh, uh, you know, he covers, he covers up for us. He justifies us before the Father. Now, it, it seems very nice, you know, when uh, we interpret. 1 John chapter 2 verse 1 where it says he is an advocate you know, just like an advocate here on earth Jesus is standing in heaven and every time an accusation comes up before uh, the father Jesus will come and defend us but you know the what that verse really means is the very presence of Jesus condemns the devil because Jesus is already taken care of our sins on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. So it doesn't mean that every time we sin, Jesus has to make an intercession for us. No, that's not how it works because we have to interpret that passage of Scripture in light with other clear passage of, passages of Scripture. So when we talk about Jesus as an advocate, what we really mean is, he already did the work of redemption and as he sits in heaven right now, his very presence, you know, uh, uh, is a testimony of the work of redemption. So Satan is condemned. Every charge which rises against, you know, us believers, that is taken care of because the work of redemption was performed 2000 years ago. So as an advocate, the role of Jesus is not like an earthly role, you know, standing up every time and defending every uh, mistake that a believer makes. No, but his presence up in heaven talks about that finished work, which he already did. So that's how we understand Jesus as an intercessor and as an advocate. Okay, so uh, I hope that is clear because there are some new teachings that say, you know, uh, uh, Satan is in the presence of God accusing us and, you know, Jesus is defending us moment by moment. So that dynamics is not seen in scripture, you know. So if we interpret Jesus as an advocate uh, in that way, it would be wrong. Jesus as an advocate simply means he stands up in heaven on the basis of the work of the cross okay right all right so uh let's move on then if you have any questions you can always interrupt uh, if not i will continue with what we've been talking about so you know, we're understanding about intercession 
we're understanding about the role of an intercessor how an intercessor goes to god on behalf of the people so as we look at scripture you know there are examples of people who stood as intercessors you know abraham is a wonderful example we see that when god in genesis chapter 18 uh, god wanted to destroy sodom and gomorrah he spoke to abraham about it he revealed his plan to Abraham. What did Abraham do at that point? You know, Abraham started negotiating with God, okay, on behalf of the people of Sodom and Gomorrah. Why was he interested in the people of Sodom and Gomorrah? Maybe because his nephew uh, Lot was in that place and he did not want that place to be destroyed, okay. So that could have been one of the reasons. But, you know, Abraham swings into action and he begins to talk to god and says god if there are these many righteous people would you please spare the land you know if there are these many righteous people would you please spare the land and you see that god was actually listening to abraham so it shows us the dynamics you know based on what is permitted in the word of god in this case mercy you know mercy god is a long suffering god he's a patient god he's a generous god he's a merciful god so what was abraham doing he was appealing to the merciful heart of god to the mercy of god and he was saying god if there are so many righteous people would you please spare the land and each time you know god was telling him yes abraham if i find so many righteous people i will do that for the land of sodom and gomorrah but unfortunately you know we know that the land could not be spared so in this manner you know abraham he actually interceded with god on behalf of the people okay so what role does abraham take up in this scenario he behaved like an intercessor so even at a time when you know abraham encounters king abimelech okay and abimelech he uh, uh unrighteous uh, i mean he decides to have sarah as his wife uh but then you know that is because he was not aware that sarah was already abraham's wife you know uh god was angry you know, because of this unrighteous desire that abimelech had and we read how uh the the uh, like Abimelech and his people and his, uh, you know, his cattle and all the livestock, all of them came down with a curse. Okay? They could not bear children. Uh, and Abimelech, you know, he goes to God and he asks God for uh, forgiveness. He asks God for healing from uh, this, uh, this, this curse. And at that time, God tells him, you ask Abraham to pray. So, you know, we understand some things here. We understand that we can appeal to the nature of God. What did Abraham do? He knew God was merciful. So he started interceding for the people. Okay. So can we do that today? Yes. Based on the nature of God, based on what is provided in the word of God for us. If God says, yes, I will heal your land. I will forgive your sins. You know, I will uh, put none of these diseases upon you. We can intercede in line with that word because when God said it, he will do it. So Abraham, knowing the nature of God, was appealing to that nature of God. Secondly, uh, you know, God seeks for an intercessor for Abimelech and, you know, for healing to come upon Abimelech's uh, people. God said, I need an intercessor somebody needs to pray for you abimelech ask abraham so abraham becomes an intercessor so you see how in the dynamics of the kingdom of god god requires intercessors so there is a role for people to pray through prayer if it was not the case we wouldn't have the opportunity to intercede or, you know, God would just tell all of us, all of you pray for yourselves. It's good enough, isn't it? Um, but Jesus did say in that day, you know, you will pray. You will ask in my name and I will do it for you. I'm not going to pray those prayers for you, but you will have to pray. And you will also, 
you know need to be uh, praying for others so there is definitely a role that intercessors have uh, in the kingdom of god and you know we pray for others we pray for the needs of others all right so i noticed that uh, it's 9:50 now so let's go ahead let's take a break uh, 10 minutes and we'll come back at uh, 10 a.m. We will continue from where we stopped, and hope uh, you know you all are getting something out of this class, uh, and uh, look forward to connecting soon. Thank you.